Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. I uh, hope everybody's been having a blessed week and everybody had a very Merry Christmas and especially a very Happy New Year. Uh, God has blessed us to see another wonderful year and he has blessed us to be here to see it. So we want to give him all the praise and the glory. Amen. And we want to just keep continuing to pray for all those who are on our sick and our shut-in list. And uh, we also want to continue to pray for Deacon Black and his family. As many of you uh, might not know, uh, his dear sister, Sister Renda, she went home to be with the Lord a little over a week ago. So we want to continue to pray for Deacon Black and that entire family. Amen. Uh, we never know when it's going to be our turn to be prayed for. So let us just don't wait until then. Let us just pray for all of our church members, all our church family, and uh, pray for each other, pray for our country, and uh, by all means continue to pray for Pastor Hill. Amen? Okay. Now, without any further ado, if you will, if you just bow with me for a word of prayer. Father, we come into your presence once again to say thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for blessing us and bringing us through another year to see another brand new year. And we thank you for those who are still here, dear Lord. We just pray that you will continue to bless those on our prayer and our healing list. We pray that you would give them your peace, dear Lord, that peace that surpasses all understanding. Just touch them with your healing love and power as only you can do. We love you and we praise you, Father, and we thank you for every spiritual blessing that you have given us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This we pray in your holy name and for your sake. Amen. All right. Let us get after it. Now, of course, we wasn't here last week, that was during the week of the Christmas, and so we kind of skipped a week on our Bible study because of the weather. But if you've been following along with us, then the last time that we were together, I asked us to make a note as to where we stopped off in our lesson. We are still studying out of the book of Acts. and. Uh, so we're still going to continue that study. And uh, here in the next couple of weeks, I'll have a new study uh, for us. But we want to continue to our study here in the book of Acts. Uh, I was going to just teach through the whole book of Acts. Uh, but I'm going to kind of give you a little break on that. We'll probably be pick back up on that again at some other point. But I want to talk about a few other things uh, in our study here when we're done with this section of this here segment of the book of Acts. Amen. So I want you to pick back up where we left off at here a couple of weeks ago in Acts. Uh, was in our Acts chapter 2, I believe it was, and uh, uh, rather Acts chapter 20. Please excuse me. Acts chapter 20, and we want to look at uh, verses uh, 28 through 31. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 through 31. And for your information, I'm going to be looking at this today from the New King James. Amen. Begin here at the 28th verse. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and, do all, and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to the shepherd, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Verse 31. Therefore, 
watch and remember that for all three years, I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Amen? Let me look at that again, verse 31. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Amen? Now, keep in mind uh, what we're dealing with here in this uh, section of our lesson. It's talking about here dealing with Ananias and Sapphira, as we will show you as we move on here. Now, he said he warned you night and day with tears. Now, in other words, he knows, when I say he, I'm talking about the enemy, Satan. He knows how to lie, amen, to the minds and the hearts of church members. Please listen carefully. He knows how to lie to the minds and the hearts of church members, even genuine Christians, amen, and, and get them to follow his orders. That's how crafty he is. Now, we forget that the ammunition about the spiritual armor there in Ephesians chapter 6, where he talks about putting on all of that spiritual armor there in Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 10, I believe, through 18. Amen? You see, well, you see, that was written to God's people. Amen? That was written to God's people, not to unbelievers. Somebody said, well, why? Why was it written to God's people? Not because it is us, when I say us, if I pray for God that you're a Christian. Amen? Because it is the Christians who are in danger of being used by Satan and his evil purposes. That's why, that's what it was written for. It was written for us. You see, amen? You see, uh, Oliver Wendell, some of you might be familiar with him, Wallace Oliver Wendell Holmes, he wrote, he said, this is a quote, he said, sin has many tools. Sin has many tools, but a lie is the handle which fits them all. Amen? A lie has many tools, but the handle which fits them all. I thought that was pretty profound. And it's also so true. Satan is a liar. The Bible calls him a liar. Amen? And he's a murderer. Right there in John 844. That's what the word of God says. He lied to and through this couple here, Ananias and Sapphira. And the lie led to their deaths when God judged Ananias and Sapphira. Amen? You see, he was also judging Satan as well. Okay? He, in other words, he was telling everybody no, that he would not tolerate deception in his church. Amen? He was letting everybody know, tell my God, that he would not tolerate deception in his church. Amen? There's a lot of deception going on in church today. There's a lot of Theft going on in church today. God said he will not tolerate it. Amen? And God is a man, as the Bible says, who should not lie.
cannot lie. Will cannot, even if he wanted to. You see, in other words, their sin, Ananias and Sapphira, their sin was motivated by pride, and pride is a sin that God especially hates and judges. He hates sin, and he said he will judge it harshly. Look what he says here in Proverbs. If you got your Bible, look at Proverbs. Just write it down. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. Look what he says here. He says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogance, and the evil way and the perverse mouth. He said, I hate. That word hate, that's a strong word. Amen. Do you know how it makes it feel? If somebody ever just look you in the eye and say, I hate you. It just cuts straight through the heart. That's a strong word. Hate. And you rarely hear God use that word. Amen. But he says that pride. Amen. And arrogance. He said, He will judge. Amen. In that in your perverse mouth. He said. He said he hates all that stuff, but he said, I will judge you. Now, you see, no doubt here, please listen carefully, no doubt here the church was praising God for the generous offering that Barnabas had brought. When Satan worshiped, amen, rather, excuse me, when Satan whispered to this couple here, Ananias and Sapphira, he said, you can also bask in this kind of glory. Can you imagine that? You can bask in this kind of glory. Well, you can make others, he says, think that you are as spiritual as Barnabas. Isn't that something? You can make others think that you are as spiritual as Barnabas. Well, so instead of resisting Satan's approaches, this is what they did. They yielded to him and then they planted or planned their strategy. Amen? They yielded to him and then they planned their strategy. And that's what the devil will do to you. See, if you yield to him and then he'll plan his strategy and he'll use you to carry out that strategy. Amen? And he can do it in so many subtle different ways. That's why the Bible tells us to put on all of that armor that I just mentioned to you there in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 through 18. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Put on that armor. That armor is what protects you. Amen? Nothing else is going to, the devil is, is not afraid of anything else except the word of God. He don't respect anything else except the word of God. Because he wants you to put on all of that armor. Amen? You see? So, so, so you see, God made it very clear here that we must be careful how we give. Be careful how you give. That's very important. Amen? He said, lest the glory that belongs to God should be given to us. Amen? So we don't never want to try to take glory that belongs to God. God said he will not share his glory with no one. See, that's what happened to Satan. That's why his name today is Satan. He's not always been Satan. And we'll talk about that a little later. Amen? You see, if you got your Bibles, look here in Matthew, if you will. We want to look at chapter 6 and verses 1 through uh, number four. Chapter six and verse four of Matthew. Amen? Are you with me? Look what he says. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men. 
to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Verse 2, therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their rewards. Amen? But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. In verses 4, that your charitable deeds may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Amen? He rewards you openly. Now I want you to look at verses 19 and verses 34 here in that Matthew. Chapter 19. And look what he says here in verses 34. Amen? I'm going to read it for you from the New King James. Look what he says. Amen? I said 34. No. Uh, 29. He says, Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or wives or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Amen? You, you, you see, the Pharisees, they were adept at calling attention to their gifts. Amen? Listen very carefully. This, has, this is dealing with giving. And, it, and then they received the praise of men. But that's all they received. He said, whatever we possess God has given to us. Whatever it is that we have, whatever we possess, God has given it to us. Amen? We are stewards of it. We, we don't own anything. We are stewards. Not owners. We don't own it. God entrusted it to us as stewards. So, so we must use what he gives us. Amen? For his glory and his glory alone. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There in John chapter 5 and verses 44. Where he says, how can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek to honor that comes from only God? Amen. That comes from only God, you see. Uh, Daniel Defoe, he called pride the first peer and president of hell. Amen. He called pride the first peer and president of hell. You see, pride will cause you to do a lot of things. A lot of things. And we ought to hate what God hates. God said he hates pride. We should do everything we can to stop being prideful. Amen. In a way that that's not pleasing to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, 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 so indeed here, it was pride that, as I showed, told you earlier, that transformed Lucifer into Satan. Amen. He wasn't always Satan. Just look over there at Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 15. He wasn't always Satan. Amen. You see? And it was pride also there in Genesis chapter 3, where he, where he said, Ye shall be as gods that caused our first parents to sin. That's what called them to sin. Anyway, Satan told me, you, you, you know, oh, you, you would be like gods. 
That's why I don't want you uh, messing with that fruit. Are you all listening to what I'm saying? You see, pride, what it does, it opens the door to every other sin. That's what it does. Every other sin, it opens the door. For once, we are more concerned, and this is so prevalent, so prevalent in our society today. We are more concerned with our reputation than our character. Amen? We're so concerned about what people think about us, how people see us, what we have, what we don't have. Amen? There is no end to the things that we will do just to make ourselves look good before other people. You'd be surprised things people do to make themselves look good before other people. And it doesn't mean a thing. It has no real exculpatory value but to stroke your ego. That's it. Amen. Now, a third feature here of their sin, Ananias and Zechariah, was especially wicked. Watch this. Their sin was directed against God's church. It was directed against the church. You see, when we have reasons to believe that Ananias and Sapphira were believers, we have reason to believe that they think that they were Christians, that they were believers. Amen? You see, the spiritual level of the church Amen. At that time, in that day, was so high that it is doubtful that a mere professor, or, or rather professor, could have gotten into the fellowship without being detected. You, you see, the fact here that that they were able to lie to the spirit, as he tells us here in Acts 5 and 3. And then tempt the spirit, as he tells us there in verses 9 of this fifth chapter. That would indicate that they had the spirit of God living within them. Amen? You see, God loves his church. He loves his church and he is jealous over it. All right? For, for the church was purchased by the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ. That's how the church was, was first born. It was purchased by the blood of Jesus. Acts 20 and 28. Amen? Where I read from you from the beginning there. And also there in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. Amen? And it has been put on this earth to glorify him. His church has been put on this earth to glorify him and do his will. Okay? Satan wants to destroy the church. That's his whole purpose. Everything that's good, right, and pleasing to God, he wants to destroy. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy me. He wants to destroy your character. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your marriage. He wants to destroy your children. He wants to destroy your testimony. Everything that's good and pleasing and right to God, he wants to destroy. Amen? He wants to destroy the church, you see? And, and, the, and, and the easiest way to do it is to use those who are within the fellowship. He can't do it from the outside. Amen? Listen, had Peter not been discerning. God bless Peter. If Peter had not been discerning, guess what? Ananias and Sapphira would have become influential people in the church. Amen? Satan would have been working through them to accomplish his purpose. Had not been for the apostle Peter being discerning. You know, the word of God tells us, please listen carefully here, and, and, and write this particular scripture down. Right here in 1 Timothy, uh, chapter 3 and verse 15, the word of God tells us here, look what he says here. Let me read this scripture to you. It says, 
But if I am delayed, amen, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Amen. That's what he wrote right here in 1 Timothy 3.15, Paul said. You see? And Satan, guess what? Satan attacks it with his lies. He attacks it with his lies. You see, the church is God's temple in which he dwells. We are the church. God dwells on the inside of us. We, we are the church. The building is the church house. This is where we come to worship at. But we are the church. Amen? Because why? He dwells in us. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So therefore, we are never alone. No matter where we go, the Holy Spirit is always with us. We're never alone. Amen? We're never alone. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16. You see? And Satan wants to move in and dwell there. He wants to move in and dwell there too. But he can't get there. He can get up here in your head, but he can't get inside your heart. Because as I told you before, that's where the Holy Spirit lives. Amen? You see, the church is God's army. We are God's army. Amen? According to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And Satan, he seeks to get into the ranks as many, amen, trained as he can. As, amen? He wants to get into the ranks. As many traitors as he can. And there are a lot of traitors in the church. Everybody in the church is not Christians. Everybody in the church is not in the church for the right reason. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The church is safe so long as Satan is attacking from the outside. You're safe as long as he's attacking from the outside. But when he gets on the inside, then the church is in danger. Amen? I said the church is in danger when he gets on the inside. Amen? It, it's just like uh, uh, long as you keep third parties outside of your marriage, you good. But once you get that third party inside of your marriage, inside of your marriage, start penetrating your home, then your marriage is in danger, your whole family is in danger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's too many people involved now in that marriage. So that makes it in danger. Are you listening to me? So it's easy for us to condemn Ananias and Zephariah for their dishonesty. It's, e it's easy for us to do that. Why? But we need to examine our own lives to see if our Profession, amen, is backed up by our practice. Our profession, that means our testimony, is backed up by our practice. You see, the Bible said practice, you know, we need to practice what we preach. Amen. Do we really mean everything we pray about in public? You ever thought about that? Do we really mean everything we pray about in public? Or do we sing, amen, those wonderful hymns and gospel songs sincerely, amen, or are they just routine? Hmm? These people, he said, honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's what he tells us there in that Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8 of the NIV. Amen? So, so if God killed religious deceivers today, 
how many church members would be left? That's a good question. If he killed the Severs today, how many church members would be left? Now, what is described here in this chapter is not a case of church discipline. Okay? Please listen carefully. Rather, it is an example of God's personal judgment. Okay? So, so, so the Lord, he said, the Lord shall judge his people. So it is a very fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. See, God tells it, it's best that we judge ourselves rather than he have to judge us. Over there in Hebrew chapter 10, verses 30 to 31, you, you see, had Ananias and Sapphiriah, had they judged their own sin, then God would not have judged them. They'd have been living today. Well, I don't know if they'd be living today, but they wouldn't have died the way they died. Amen. Just look at that 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 31. But they agreed to lie. Amen. It was almost it was like a conspiracy. They agreed to lie. And God had to deal with them. And God will deal with us too. He'll deal with us. Amen. You see? So, so Ananias was dead and buried. And Sapphiriah did not even know it. He didn't know that God, she didn't know that God had done struck him dead. Satan always keeps his servants in the dark. He'll never tell you the truth. He always gonna keep you in the dark. Because he, 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 he is darkness. You see, God is light. Satan is dark. He always gonna keep, find a way to keep you in the dark to make it look like everything is okay. But when you take the cover off of it, you'll see. That he's nothing but what the Bible says. He's a liar, he's a thief, and he's a murderer. Amen? So while God guides us, his servants, he guides us in the dark. That's why he tells us there in that psalm. He said, my word is a light unto your feet and a lamp to your path. If we follow the word of God, we would never stumble into Satan's lies and his dark lies and, 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 and uh, deceptions and so forth. Amen? John, that's what John 15 and 5, uh, 15 and 15. You see, Peter accused her of attempting God's spirit. Amen? He accused her of tempting God's spirit. That is, deliberately disobeying and sin how far God would go. He just tempted. See, you don't want to tempt the Lord. The Lord said he don't tempt no more, and you shouldn't be tempting the Lord to try to see how far he'll go because he does have a point where he shuts down. You don't want to go that far. Amen? You don't want to go there. Amen? That's what he tells us that right there in Exodus, chapter 17 and 2, in Deuteronomy 6 and 16. Okay? They were actually defying God and daring him to act. Boy, that's dangerous. They were defying him and daring him to act. Amen? And guess what? He acted. He acted. He acted with swiftness and finality. Amen? He said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, Matthew 4 and 7 tells us. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You see, we must keep in mind that their sin was not in robbing God of money, but in lying to him and robbing him of glory. That was their, that was their sin. You can't rob God of money. Everything God, God owns it all. Everything we have, he owns. Everything we will ever have comes from the Lord. Amen? Everything, is, it comes from the Lord. They were not required to sell 
their property. Bible doesn't support that. They weren't required to do that. And having sold it, they were not required to give any of the money to the church. So why were they doing that? Pride, trying to make it look like they were more spiritual than they were. Just look at that fourth, fourth verse in Acts chapter 5. Amen. You see, their lust for recognition conceived in sin in their heart. Their lust for recognition. You'd be surprised what some people will do to be recognized by other people to make them look like they're more important than what they really are. Amen? And that sin eventually produced death. Amen? I said that sin eventually produced death. Now, with that, I'm going to break it off right here. Amen? And we're going to finish up packing this next week. Amen? Now, where I want to pick back up on this next weekend is right here, and I'm going to show you, we're going to uh, revisit this just for a moment, right here in Acts chapter 5 and verses 4 through 9. Amen? Which where we'll pick back up on this next week. And let me finish showing you, or fin let's finish unpacking this. Amen? You see? Amen? And that sin eventually produced in them it produced death. Okay? All right. That's where we're going to break it off at. And I hope the lesson is making sense to us. And like I said, we maybe got another week or so uh, in this here particular uh, series of acts that we've been studying. And uh, I'm going to have a new lesson for us here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, I'll uh, have it put in the bullet and you'll know exactly what it is and what it entails and what the subject is going to be. And I'll give you some scriptures as well. Amen? Okay. Now, please remember, those who we ask for prayer, amen, especially uh, the black family, and uh, always continue to pray for Sister Estella Wilson, pray for Sister Tyree. These are prayer needs. Okay? These are prayer needs. Pray for them, as well as Sister Tyree's uh, daughter, Sister Dietrich. Would you do that? Amen? And pray for our church, pray for our pastor, pray for our country. We're going. God has blessed us to see another brand new year. So with that, I believe that God has a lot more for us to do. So let us be obedient to his word and uh, whatever he says, agree with what he says, and we'll be forever blessed. Okay? And as I tell, always say, we don't ever close out our lesson unless we uh, offer someone to come to the Lord. Amen. If you know you're a sinner, you know you're not saved. Amen. God don't want to lose a one of us. He tells us in his word there in Acts 2.21, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he also tells us that there in Act, I mean, uh, Romans 10.13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that he died on that cross for your sins and he rose the third day. Amen? If you pray that prayer and you believe that in your heart, believe God will come into your heart and he will save you. And he'll be your Lord and Savior. And if you die tonight, you go straight to heaven. That's what the Bible says. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we are never alone without Jesus Christ, whether you're dead or whether you're alive. If you're a Christian, he lives on the inside of you. Everywhere you go, he's right there with you. Amen? So if you know, if you know you're not saved and you want to be, just repeat that prayer. And then get baptized and get into your Bible teaching and Bible preaching church. And serve the Lord for the rest of your life. And you'll be forever blessed. That's my lesson for us today. So may God bless you and may he keep you and may his face shine upon you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again for the wonderful privilege to have come into your presence to study your word. We pray, O oh God, that your word be found a light in our heart, dear Lord, and let it find a resting place that we may always endeavor to do what's good and right and pleasing in your sight. And let us always remember 
that if we agree with what you said, whatever that is, then we'll be forever blessed. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, dear Lord. So we thank you for bringing us through another year. Thank you, and we pray that you would uh, let us be prosperous in our spirit, in our finances, and in our health throughout the rest of this year. And we'll give you all the praise and the glory. This we pray in your name and for your sake. Amen. God bless you, church. Y'all have a blessed week, safe week. And I'll see you next week. God bless you.